All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh uh, Shimei Shai, which begins with the uh, 144,000, which is really the government body of the nation of Israel. Uh, they're part of Yahweh uh, Shai's uh, government, the 144,000. Um, once again, Shalom to the Lord's elect, because uh, we do these videos, really we do these, these videos for the elect, the sake of the elect, because they're the only ones that's going to truly understand the 100% truth, and to go even deeper, they're, they're the only ones that's going to be delivered by Yahweh Shai, and this is pursuant to Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 30th verse. You'll notice these other religions... Right, and even certain Israelites, right, you'll notice they don't teach about the elect. You'll notice they don't tell you the real deal, which is, and a lot of them don't even know that when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's only going to gather his elect. And the scriptures are very clear on this. Uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 30th verse. Okay, and then the Apostle Paul said that we are to give diligence to make our calling and election sure. So he mentioned. The Apostle Paul mentioned calling and election, because just because you're called into this doesn't mean you're part of the elect. As it is written, many are called, but few are chosen. Now, if you know your Greek, when you go into the word, that scripture there for chosen, many are called, few are chosen. When you go into the Greek, the word there for chosen is electos. Or, no, I'm sorry, it's pronounced eklektas, eklektas. And that word means, that's where you get the word elect from which basically means the chosen ones, the elect. And the elect were chosen even before the earth was created. The scriptures tell us that. So, you know, you can clearly see how lost these other religions are and even certain Israelites, okay? Because they don't teach that information that I just shared with you. Anyway, um, I'm going to call this video a great summation of what this truth is. And it's based upon some words that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Israelites in Corinth, which is powerful words indeed, okay? And um, I was reading that scripture, it was about, what, 4 o'clock in the morning, a little after 4 o'clock, and I read it in the NLT, so I contrast uh uh, 2 Corinthians, the 4th chapter, beginning at the 7th verse, I read it in the KJV, and I read it in the NLT, which is, is, which is what I got here on the screen for you. Okay, so hopefully this will inspire you, like it inspired me, to really understand what this ministry is all about, what this truth is all about. You have to really know what you're involved in. Okay, you can't be like a, a wallflower in, in this thing of ours. You have to really know what you're involved in. All right, so what you about to hear, what the Apostle Paul said more than 2,000 years ago, what he said in this letter to the Israelites in Corinth is, is uh, powerful indeed, okay? So 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, we're going to start at the seventh verse, but I just want to draw your attention to the subheadings here for the fourth chapter. On the KJV side, it says, Paul, apostolic ministry, apostolic ministry and the word apostle means sent away right and on the nlt side it says treasure in fragile clay jars now the treasure is this knowledge this truth the fragile clay jars is these bodies that we're in i told you i told you it was gonna <laughs> it was gonna get uh, spicy okay let's read that again it says treasure in fragile and indeed, these bodies are fragile, very fragile. Treasure in fragile clay jars. That's these bodies that we're in. All right, so we're going to jump down to the seventh verse. And what I'm going to do is read, read, you read what I tell you to read, inside joke. What I'm going to do is read the KJV version and the NLT version. So this is the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter beginning at the seventh verse. It says here on the KJV side, it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. 
That's why the subheading on the NLT side said uh, tra uh, treasure in fragile clay jars, okay, which is the, these bodies. And this treasure is the knowledge. Now, the seventh verse, the KJV says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And indeed, this knowledge, this truth is a treasure. And it's a treasure you can't possibly put a price on. Now, to explain that even more, we go to Romans, the 11th chapter. And what makes it even more of a treasure is that very few people can understand it. Very few people even know it. Know this knowledge, this truth. Let me show it to you. Uh, Romans, the 11th chapter, the 33rd verse. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father. So that's the riches, the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father, okay, through, that you get through the Scriptures. How unsearchable are His judgments. See, very few people know this wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father, right? How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. And the reason why they don't know is because the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, through the Holy Spirit, has not revealed it to them. That's why they don't know. You can't know this knowledge, this truth, unless it's revealed to you by the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son, through, you know, through the angels, okay? Because the angels, that's part of their job. Their job is to minister. And you can read that in Hebrews, the first chapter, the uh, beginning at the 13th verse. The job of the angels is to minister unto the saints of the Heavenly Father, all right? So, the the Holy Spirit, as it were, is really a group of angels, or it could be one angel or a group of angels that's sent to us to give us more understanding, work on our minds to give us more understanding. You know, that is essentially the Holy Spirit, okay? So, uh, like it says in Hebrews, are they not ministering spirits? There you go. So, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out, see? For who have known the mind of the Lord, or who have been his counselor? So what's the answer to that? The, the, well, beginning with the prophets, all right? Amos 3 and 7, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So, you know, the Apostle Paul, he laid out the, the body of the ministry. He, he, talked about, um, he talked about the apostles, he talked about the prophets, he talked about the teachers. Okay, so you have apostles, you have prophets, you have teachers. Okay, they know the deal. They know, they have that treasure that it speaks about in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, okay, which are these bodies. Now, let's read the uh, NLT version. The same scripture, Romans 11 and 33. Oh, how great are the Heavenly Father's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it, it how impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways, but for the elect is not impossible. For the elect is possible. Because he, he have cared as the scripture have said, that's in the Apocrypha, he have cared for his elect. As a matter of fact, uh, the same chapter, the scripture just come to mind. We're gonna jump up to the uh, seventh verse to prove this. Okay, uh, Romans 11 and 7. Let's first read it in the KJV. Romans 11 and 7, which says this. Uh, what then Israel, because it starts with the nation of Israel, that, that's the Lord's chosen people. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election out of the nation of Israel. The election comes out of the nation of Israel, the chosen. Remember the word chosen in the Greek, eklektos, which means elect. That's where you get the word elect, right? What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? What are they seeking for? The truth. You know, you got a lot of Israelites think the truth is in plantation Christianity. A lot of them think it's in Muslim or Muslim. A lot of them think it's in these different religions. Some even think it's in Buddha. All right? Uh, what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? And they're all seeking for the truth. You know, the reasons of why they're here on this planet, these Israelites, right? But the election have obtained, have obtained what? The truth, the 100% truth. They know the deal, okay? The 100% truth. And when I say the 100% truth, the bitter as well as the sweet. They understand the uh, uh, righteous, uh, righteous and the wicked, okay? They understand both sides. Because that's what this knowledge, this truth reveals to you, the righteous and the wicked. 
because the Heavenly Father deals with both. All right, a lot of people don't understand that or even know that. The Heavenly Father created both sides. He created good as well as evil. Now, to have 100% uh, understanding, you have to know both sides. You have to know the good and the evil. So the elect of the nation of Israel, we're getting both. We're getting the good and the evil, understanding of both, okay? Even Job said to his wife, shall we not receive evil? Um, I mean, he said, shall we not receive good from the Heavenly Father and not receive evil? I can, wait a minute, I can show it to you. So you have to know both sides. And that is 100% truth. Okay, this is what Job said to his wife. Uh, let me see. I think it's in the second chapter. This is after his wife saw the state Job was in. And she got emotional and she told Job to, well, let's start the seven verse, Job 2 and 7. So went Satan, so went Satan, and that's the spiritual demon Satan. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, see? And the Heavenly Father created Satan. And the Heavenly Father created Satan for the Heavenly Father's purpose. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with saw boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. That had to be immensely painful. Not to mention it had to be disgusting and, you know, Job was in, in a world of hurt, so to speak. And he took him a pot shed to scrape himself with all. That's after the boils dried up, so it probably very itchy. And he sat down among the ashes. Oh, he was looking pitiful. And his wife just lost it, you know, which shows you women are emotional. They don't reason with logic. They reason with emotions. So listen to what his wife says to him. Then said his wife unto him, Doest thou still retain thine integrity? Curse the Most High and die. See? Because she got emotional. All right, Job, when she saw the state of Job, she got emotional. So her reasoning was just curse the Most High and die. Because she knew if you curse the Most High, eventually, she, she knew if you curse the Most High, you're going to die. All right? But listen to what, now Job came in with the rational mind, which shows you men are rational. Because listen to the response Job gave to her. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. And that's one of the reasons why the Heavenly Father said that a woman is supposed to learn in silence. She's supposed to be quiet. Okay? But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Now here's the point. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Heavenly Father? And shall we not receive evil? Why? Because the Heavenly Father deals with both. So to have understanding of 100% truth, you have to understand both sides. You have to understand the good as well as the evil. Because the Heavenly Father deals with both. He created both. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Heavenly Father? And shall we not receive evil? Which at that time, Job was receiving what? Evil from the Heavenly Father. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So he told the truth. And at the same time, he put his woman, his wife, in her place, okay? He brought in the rational side of things, okay? We have to deal with both sides. We have to know about both sides, okay? As a matter of fact, let's quickly go to Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45 and 7, which says this, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. See? See? So, once you know and understand that, like it says in Romans 11 and 7, you have, you have obtained what? The truth, the 100% truth. Let's go back to Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? Because many Israelites don't know this. Especially the ones that are outside of the truth. Especially the ones that are caught up in these religions. They don't know that the Heavenly Father creates both sides. Or created both sides. And deals with both sides. If there's evil done in the city, scripture is very clear on this. Amos 3 and 6. If there's evil done in the city, the Lord hath done it. You can read that for yourself in Amos, the book of Amos, the third chapter, the sixth verse. So you have to learn that, man. You have to understand that. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? And many Israelites don't understand that. But the election have obtained it. The election have obtained what? The hundred percent truth. And I just gave you an example. They understand the Heavenly Father created both sides, good as well as evil. And he deals with both sides. They understand that. That's just one example. There are many examples of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So can you see how 
this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Heavenly Father is a treasure. And what makes it even more of a treasure is the majority of people don't know, don't know the Heavenly Father, don't know how he operates. Though They don't know that he created both sides and deals with both sides, good as well as evil. Okay, I'm just giving you one example. There are many other examples. Okay, what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Blinded by who? The Heavenly Father. See? And that's the majority of our people. They're blinded. That's why they're going into this religion and that religion. They're bouncing into religions uh, you know, um, willy-nilly, so to speak. Okay? <laughs> One week they're a Pentecost. Next week they're a Baptist. Two weeks later they're a Jehovah's Witness. You know? And then you have Israelites that are supposed to know this stuff, and they don't even understand that. Okay, so truly the Lord is, the, what's, the, what's the answer? The Lord is dealing with his elect. The elect know the whole truth. That's the answer. According as it is written, the heavenly father have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So the heavenly father blinded them. Now, let's go back to Romans 11 and uh, show you that, because in Second. Corinthians, the fourth chapter, it says we have this treasure. So let me show you that this is indeed a treasure. Uh, Romans 11 and 33, or the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom of the knowledge, the, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Yeah, like I gave you an example with the, the good and the evil thing. The Heavenly Father created both sides and he deals with both sides. How, what's it say here? And his judgments... Or are his judgments and his ways past finding out? And I give you a perfect example with the good and the evil. Okay? For who have known the mind of the Lord or who have been his counselor? There you go. So now, when we go back, now you understand why this is a treasure. Because I gave you a great example. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure or this understanding, Right? In earthen vessels, that's this, these bodies that we're in. That the excellency of the power may be of the Most High and not of us. Now, I've been saying for a while now that we didn't give ourselves this understanding, this knowledge, this truth. Okay, and this, this scripture just nails it. Because when you read when you read the same verse in the NLT, look at what it says here. It, it even makes it even more explicit. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, meaning our minds, right? But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars. That's where the subheading came from. We ourselves are like fragile clay jars. What's that talking about? These bodies, okay? Containing this great treasure. <laughs> now tell me that ain't powerful. Man, when I read that, I was like, whoa, okay? <laughs> like my man, Black Rob. I think he passed away. He was a rapper. He had that one song, whoa. I was like, whoa. So when I read that, I was like, whoa. Okay. Second Corinthians 4 and 7, we now have this light shining in our hearts, meaning our minds. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. That's powerful, man. This makes it clear that our great power, and indeed this knowledge is a great power. So brothers, you have a great power. Brothers talking about when I get the spiritual power, I hope I get the spiritual power. Guess what? If you have the understanding of this knowledge, if you have the understanding of this truth, you have a spiritual power. That in itself is a spiritual power. That's pursuant to uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. All right? and the word of the Lord is quick and powerful. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in these weak bodies, these fragile clay jars, like it says here. This makes it clear that our great power is from the Heavenly Father, not from ourselves. See, now I've been saying that, man. Now I have proof. Now I have concrete proof that I've been saying that we didn't give ourselves this knowledge, this truth. It was a gift given to us, Ephesians 2 and 8. So that removes all that foolish pride. Anybody in this knowledge, this truth that behaves proud, proudly, foolishly, that person don't understand the scriptures. They are not knowing the scriptures. We didn't give ourselves this knowledge. We didn't call ourselves into this thing of ours. All right? We were called, man. 
So that removes all the, you know, uh, to uh, put ourselves on a pedestal and think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, like the Apostle Paul said, because we didn't give ourselves this great power. It was given to us. It was a gift. And there's, this, there's the proof, okay? So back to 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 now. We're going to go to the 11th verse, and then I'm going to end this video. We are troubled on every side. Now, ain't that the truth? <laughs> you, you've been in this knowledge long enough. You know that to be true. You brothers and you uh, sisters out there, you know that to be true. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. And that's why I say that this is the very essence of this knowledge, this truth. And you, you brothers and you sisters involved in this thing, you have to understand that. So when the, when the adversity comes, you'll be able to balance it. You'll be able to deal with the adversity even more effectively because you have this information, which is a treasure. See? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed. Sometimes we are perplexed. We're wondering why, these evil, why is this evil happening to us when we're trying to be righteous. That puts you in a state of being perplexed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, right? We, it's not like we don't have hope. We do have hope. That's what it means to be in despair. That's when a person has no hope whatsoever. Now, let's read the same verse in the NLT. We are pressed on every side by troubles. See? But we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. See? That was the 8th verse. Now, let's read the, NL, um, the KJV, the ninth verse. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And that starts with our own people that persecute us, that cast us down. But even though we're persecuted, we're not forsaken. Okay? Even Yahweh Shai made a statement when he was on the cross. He said, my power, my power, why have you forsaken me? At that moment, he felt forsaken. But really, was he forsaken? No. Because when he gave up the spirit, three days later, the beginning of the fourth day, was he not raised out the grave, out the tomb? Yes, he was. And by the way, that's the cornerstone of our belief. We believe that 100, 150%. Okay? Even as Yahweh Shai was raised up, we're going to be raised up. Because at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father got to raise up his people, his nation, the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. Just like he raised up his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, who, by the way, now sits at, the, at his right hand in the heavens, in the spirit world. Okay, so it says persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Now let's read the same verse in, in the NLT. We are hunted down but never abandoned by the Heavenly Father. See? So that's immensely comforting to notice. Okay? We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. All right? See? So this is powerful for you to remember when you're going through adversity, being in this knowledge and this truth, whatever it may be. Okay? And we are going to go in adverse, in, into adversity. Because adversity, those are tests. That we must pass to prove ourselves worthy. Tenth verse, KJV. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Yahweh Shai, that the life also of Yahweh Shai might be made manifest in our body. Uh, the tenth verse, NLT. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Yahweh Shai. And that's why us brothers go through. Uh, we go through tribulations in our body. We go through what is called infirmities. That's part. That's a rite of passage of being in this knowledge of truth. You know, and every as it is written, all are chastised. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul said, "If we be without chastisement, then we are bastards, bastards, and not sons." Meaning, Yahweh Shimei Shai don't know us. All are chastised in this knowledge of truth. All right. Don't think that. One brother's suffering with, with his ailments, and you ain't going to suffer. Okay? Again, uh, Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter, Whatsoever is brought upon you, take cheerfully and be patient when you are changed to a lower state. All right? It says, Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Yahweh Shai, so that the life of Yahweh Shai may, be, may also be seen in our bodies. See? 
And finally, the 11th verse, the KJV, For we which live are always del delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake. Now, that's powerful, man. Because we really, we could die out there. And it's for Yahweh Shai's sake. Okay? It's for Yahweh Shai's sake. We, we catch all, the, all this hell. We're persecuted. We're for, it seems like we're forsaken for who? For Yahweh Shai's sake. We're doing all of this for Yahweh Shai's sake. That's why I said earlier in this video, you have to know why you, what, what you're involved in. You have to know why you're going through what you're going through. You have to understand. Okay? And if you're a member of the elect, you will understand. Okay? It says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake. And that's really going to escalate when they make this RFID chip mandatory under the penalty of death. You know, uh, the top wicked elite, they're going to send out their goon squad, their Illuminati armies, to round people up, to either bring them to the detention center or concentration camp for them to be processed for that electronic device because their main agenda is they want everyone chipped. That's exactly what Nick Rockefeller told Aaron Russo before Aaron Russo passed away. He said, we want everyone chipped, and the Rockefellers... The uh, members of uh, the top members of the top banking families, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and doing some research, I found out the Rockefellers are really uh, signs of the Rothschilds. They just changed their name when they came to America. Okay, so check that out. So they want everyone chipped. That's according to the New World Order. That's the elite mark of the New World Order. So in those days, Esau is going to make it very troublous. It's going to be troublous times, a time of trouble. And we've been telling you about. The time of Jacob's trouble. So this adds more to it right here. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake, that the life also of Yahweh Shai might, make, might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. There you go. Uh, the same verse in the NLT. Yes, we live under constant danger of death. And I just gave you the ultimate example of the constant danger of death. When they make this thing mandatory, anyone who refuses it is subject to be put to death. Even the Apostle John on the island of Patmos, he saw brothers who became martyrs. Look up the word martyr. What is a martyr? Brothers who became martyrs for Yahweh Shai's sake, for this knowledge sake. And that lines up right along with the 11th verse. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh Shai's sake. And we that's in this knowledge and this truth, we, we're supposed to meditate on that every day. That we could lose our life for Yahweh Shai's sake. We, we, we have to be ready and willing to give up our lives for Yahweh Shai's sake, if need be. Just like Yahweh Shai gave up his life for our sake. Right? Now, if you don't understand that, um, well, if you're a member of the elect, you will come to understand that. But if you're not a member of the elect, you're not going to understand that nor are you, are you going to accept that, okay? But that's something that we, that are hopeful members of the elect, that's something we know and accept, that we could lose our lives being in this ministry if, if it be the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. We could lose our life for Yahweh Shai's sake, which I always say we've never lived anyway. Outside of this ministry, this gospel, we ain't living, man. Yahweh Shai said it best. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but in me you shall have peace. Anytime we deal with this knowledge, this truth, especially when we're with the brotherhood, the true brotherhood, there's an inner peace. But as soon as we leave it and we go back into the world and do what we have to do in the world, there's nothing but tribulation, man. Like the scripture said of Lot, he was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. That's another thing that vexes us, man. The filthy conversation of the wicked that we're hearing every day especially with this transformer movement and, and, and accepting moes and accepting freaks and retards and everything vexes us, man. The only thing that brings some kind of peace of mind is when we're involved in this knowledge, this truth. Facts, okay? Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Yahweh Shai. There you go. So you have to understand us so that the life of Yahweh Shai will be evident in our dying bodies. In our dying bodies. So are we going to be the epitome of health? The answer is no. 
you know, brothers do what they can to to make their life their life make their health better. Try to improve a little on their health, but the the truth is, we're never going to receive a, a optimum health. We're not going to be the epitome of health, no matter how many organic juices we drink and organic food we eat and no matter how many fasters fasters no matter how fast fasts we do you know intermittent fasting now i'm not saying not to do it you know even exercising as it is written bodily exercise profit of little fasting profit of eating right profit of you try to eat it right as much as possible but at the end of the day we're still going to catch hell in these bodies that's the point all right, and you have to understand that. All right, so it says, Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Yahweh Shai. That's why, because we serve Yahweh Shai. So that the life of Yahweh Shai will be evident in our dying bodies. Now, the beautiful thing is when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to reward us for our patience believing in him and suffering with him. He's going to reward us first with salvation and then a changed body. The Apostle Paul told us that in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. So we're doing this for a reward. We're enduring all of this for a reward. Okay, and at the same time, we're doing it because that's just the right thing to do. As being Israelites, the chosen people of the Lord, the princes of power, we're doing what we're supposed to do. What does the scripture say? After we've done that which we're supposed to do, say we're unprofitable servants because we did what we're supposed to do. Okay. All right, so at that point, I'm going to end it there. I believe I've said all I need to say through the Holy Spirit. Once again, I hope you were edified by it. If you was, drop a line in the comment section. And as usual, we go to the next one.